I would like to remind everyone to make sure that all your cell phones are turned off or vibrate, vibrating position. Also, please be advised that our city council meeting are broadcast on TV and they're on Comcast Channel 99. This meeting of its guests and city council will now come to order. The chair calls on City Clerk Ivan Nelson for the roll call. Councilman Harris. Here. Councilman Williams is absent today. Councilman Avery. Here. President Eccles is also absent today, and the meeting is being chaired by Councilman Cannon, who is President Pro Tem. Councilman Stewart. Here. Cannon. Here. Reed. Here. We have a quorum present. The meeting is open for business. I'm going to ask Joan Henry to come forward and lead the invocation. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Father, we thank you today for such a beautiful day and for all the good things that you've done for us. May you bless us and control us that we glorify you in all that we do and say as we help each other in this community to make a better way and a better life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> War Eagle. <coughs> the Chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the work session and council meeting on April the 5th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Uh, Those opposed? <coughs> motion carries to approve minutes. The chair will entertain a motion to ratify payments of account for the week of April 1st through the 7th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote, please? Those in favor, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to ratify payment of the accounts. Number <coughs> seven, <coughs> proclamations. Jerry Don for the mayor, please. <coughs> Excuse me. We have two today. Uh, would Marcia Bush Kendrick, who is the local SCLC president, come forward, and Miss Gertie Lowe, who is the secretary of the National Executive Board of SCLC? Would you come forward, please? <coughs> This City of Gaston Proclamation, whereas the Southern Christian Leadership Conference was founded in 1957 by Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., and whereas, through the effectiveness of his message, Dr. King was a drum major for peace, justice, and freedom, and whereas the life of Dr. King had a lasting impact on all humanity, black, white, Jew, and Gentile, Catholic, and Protestant. And whereas SCLC has continued the mission of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., and the SCLC is a nonprofit, non sectarian interfaith adv advocacy organization that is committed to nonviolent action to achieve social, economic, and political justice. And whereas we salute the continuing of the SCLC's mission through its Gadsden City chapter, now therefore be it resolved that I, Sherman Gatton, Mayor of the City of Gadsden, do hereby proclaim that the City of Gadsden recognizes the work of the Gadsden SCLC, and it's uh, signed by the Mayor. Would you like to? Thank you. We're going to ask all our board members and our SCLC members if they will stand at this time. We would like to say on behalf of our national SCLC and our local chapter, thank you to the city. We appreciate you for your support. We look forward to continuing to have a working relationship with you. I would also like to invite everyone that's here today for our annual scholarship banquet, which will be on April the 16th at the anti Ark Family Life Center. If you need a ticket, please see me or Ms. Lowe before we leave today. 
And to our councilman, your letter, Mr. Harris, let me know that that date had expired on it. Omit the date. Please <laughs> see us. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I have one more. If Marie Johnson, the director at uh, Family Success Center, would come forward. And Joan Henry, if you would come back up. She's the coordinator there. <coughs> City of Gadsden Proclamation, where preventing child abuse and neglect is a community problem that depends on involvement among people throughout the community. And whereas child maltreatment occurs when people find themselves in stressful situations without community resources and don't know how to cope. And whereas the majority of child abuse cases stem from situations and conditions that are preventable in an engaged and supportive community. And whereas child abuse and neglect can be reduced by making sure each family has the support they need to raise their children in a healthy environment. Whereas child abuse and neglect not only directly harm children, but also increase the likelihood of criminal behavior, substance abuse, health problems such as heart, and obese, heart disease and obesity, and risky behavior such as smoking. And whereas all citizens should become involved in supporting families and raising their children in a safe and nurturing environment, and whereas effective child abuse prevention programs succeed because of partnerships created among social service agencies, schools, faith communities, civic organizations, law enforcement agencies, and the business community. Therefore, I, Sherman Guyton, Mayor of the City of Get, excuse me, City of Gazan, on behalf of the Department of Child Abuse and Neglect Prevention, the Child Trust Fund, and Prevent Child Abuse Alabama, hereby proclaim April 2011 as Child <coughs> Abuse Prevention Month. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And again, I want to echo what the earlier group said. We just want to tell this mayor and council how much we appreciate your support in this community. You are always here for us and always have a wonderful listening ear, and we appreciate so much what you do for this community on a daily basis. I'd like to also take a moment and tell you you have blue bows for your office doors, so please enjoy them. And you have gifts from the Gadsden City Board of Ed. Nancy Crowley and Felicia Pageant, those were made by our kindergarten students as they learned about <coughs> child abuse prevention and what it was, and it's not cool for that to happen in your home. So please enjoy your little uh, gifts and have them on your desk for this month. So we would like to say how much we appreciate them doing that. And I'd like to take a minute and ask our volunteers if they would stand up. So if you work with our program, please stand real quickly and let us say thank you to you for all that you do and work in this community. Thank you very much. That brings us down to number nine, unfinished business. We have none today. <coughs> Items nine through 12. This is the time and place to advertise to conduct a public hearing, allowing anyone to speak in opposition to or in favor of a resolution assessing nuisance abatement liens against property. This is for grass cutting, which has already been performed. And we have four locations. I'm going to read the address and names. Anyone who wishes to speak about any of these may come forward to the podium, please. Number nine, the first one's 415 Roslyn Drive in District 2, $566, Lester Gaddis. Number, the next one is 1011 Slusher Avenue in District 2, $281, State of Alabama Property Tax Division, Anthony E. Lindsay and Margaret Lindsay. The next one's 913 South Line Avenue, District 2, $591, William J. and Mildred B. Tanner. Number 12 is 1114 Central Avenue, District 6, $411, Alabama Department of Revenue Property Tax Division. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to any of these resolutions? Does anyone here wish to speak in favor? The chair will entertain a motion to adopt all four resolutions. So moved. Second. Are there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote, please? Those in favor to adopt all four resolutions, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to adopt all four. 
Number 13 is our final public hearing is a resolution or approving issuance of an alcoholic beverage license. Olin Brian Farley doing business as the Hideout Fat Dogs Enterprise has applied for a class one liquor retail license at 2811 East Megan Boulevard. Is there anyone here who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Does anyone here wish to speak in favor? The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote, please? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Number 14 is awarding bid number 3166 for a full size super crew cab, four door, two wheel drive, three quarter ton pickup truck. The NEFA coordinator has recommended awarding the bid to Ronnie Watkins Ford, and the amount is $23,000. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Number 15 is awarding bid number 3168 for mortar and concrete sand and pea gravel. The need for coordinator is recommend awarding the bid to Sherman Industries. Uh, prices for pickup and delivery are as followed. Mortar sand $30 and $34. Concrete sand $14 and $16. Pea gravel $25 and $27. The chair would entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote, please? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Number 16 is a resolution authorizing emergency shelter grant application and certification for the following. Salvation Army, $105,000. <coughs> 13th place, $85,000. The Love Center, $25,000 to $40,000. And Second Chance, $5,000. As applicant, the city must guarantee matching funds, but it, is, but, it will provide, but it will be provided by the shelter. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Um, the, the Second Chance. Uh, I asked upstairs about that. I, I do know that we do not have a, a shelter for uh, battered uh, spouses, I guess that's a better word than said, females, because it's, some males get battered around too. Um, we, we, we're still working on trying to get a center back here in Gaston, but I understand that this is the one that right now we're working with out of the Anniston area, so that's why it's such a small amount. And, and, and hopefully we'll be able to get out <coughs> back here in Etowah County. I think also Second Chance is housed in the Family Success Center, isn't it? Yeah. They are. I'll be yeah. glad to address that. They've been housing our... our you want to come to the podium, please? Yeah. I'm sorry. Good idea. Yeah. <coughs> I'd be glad to. <coughs> the uh, Second Chance has been housed at the Family Success Center since October. And, of course, since the changeover from Rose Haven, they have been housing our clients from Etowah County for a couple of years without any bump in the road. But they now have a full-time outreach and, and are working toward what Robert Avery is referring to. We would like to have a residential home here. So that's the next step. But they have a full-time person here serving Etowah County now. She's at DHR on Mondays and at our center the other four days of the week to see clients. So Good. hopefully okay. that maybe answers that. Right. Yeah, Thank you, Marie. Thank you, Thank you. Right. Thank you. Is there any more discussion on that? Clerk, will you take the vote, please? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? <clears throat> motion carries to adopt. Number 17 is the first reading of ordinance adopting 2011 and 2012 community development block grant budget in the amount of $1,175,000. One this, this ordinance has been presented today for the first reading, and the council will vote on it next week. Mr. President, I would ask at this time for a motion to suspend the rules. I make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote, please? Those in favor to consider the ordinance today, let it be known as saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent has been granted. I make a motion to pass. Second. Okay, are there any discussion on this? Yeah, 
Well, you know, I'm, I'm still concerned about the amount, and I, I forgot to talk with Nick upstairs. I do know in the resolution or the budget that was just passed by Congress, there was a major cut in CDBG funds. As a matter of fact, I think it was the most heaviest of all funding cut. And I'm not sure if we're going to be getting 1.1 million. Um, as a matter of fact, I can almost, yes, ma'am, you want to address that? We come to the podium, Come please. up to the podium and let us know if you've got a final figure. This is not official, but I got a uh, note from the National Community Development Association just before I came down here that that continuing resolution did include a 16.3% cut in CDBG. That, so was we had, that was the final That was the final, right? yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> okay. That's a lot better than the 70% they were proposing. Yeah, and they're still proposing that for 2012, so we need to keep that effort about promoting it and keeping right. it in, on the, in the highlights. Okay. You know, because 2012 is what Still you're talking 70%. about with the 63% cut. Yeah. I know that was one of the hot issues when we were in Washington <laughs> and, and, and meeting with the congressmen and, and the senators. And, and my position <laughs> is very, very simple. And I, uh, If you're going to cut that to the extent of 70% 70, 70 and, and you can look at this budget, I think it was published in the paper, uh, the things that we do with community development block grant funds, for instance, Litchfield Avenue street improvement. We're going to do Litchfield Avenue to Hoke Street, <coughs> Wall Street from Litchfield to Door, uh, Miller Street from the end to uh, Spring Rock, uh, a number of things. And then you drop down here to public service. And this is where it really where the rubber meets the road. Uh, Manor, we give Manor money. We give the family success money out of this, 13th place. The Way of the Cross, the Love Center, the Barry Center, the Snell Grove Center, uh, Breakaway Ministries, Council on Aging and Homeless Coalition of Northeast, of Northeast Alabama. And, and see, these people up in Washington are playing games with our lives, and you, you don't understand that. They're talking about cutting these budgets and cutting these budgets, and it sounds good. You know, we got to get within our means. I understand that. But we just sent billions of dollars over to um, Libya. We just sent billions of dollars over to Iraq. But yet we're cutting out monies to feed our senior citizens who are sick and shut in. See, these guys are playing with our lives, and you don't understand that. We need to make sure that these people understand that there are other places you can be cutting other than these type of programs. And they were sitting there talking about cutting this program some 70%. If this program was cut some 70%, we would get right at, what, 30-some thousand dollars as opposed to 1.1 million? And that's ludicrous when they're sending all that money overseas. So I just want you to be mindful of that. And that's why every chance I get when something like this come up, I'm going to remind the public as to what's going on. It's good to sit up there and talk about cuts. And it's good to sit up there and talk about getting back in the, in the budget. And I understand all that. But I can't understand when you're sending mi mi billions of dollars overseas every day and then you want to cut the people over here who are paying the taxes. You want to cut them from these services, and that's a bunch of baloney. But anyway, I'm off my soapbox. Yeah, you know, I, I think you're absolutely uh, correct in that, Robert. The, I think the biggest thing we learned up there was that we've got so many new people up there that do not even know what we're talking about with CDBG. So it's our job in NLC and as a city of yeah. several to get up there and tell these people and keep pushing. Because I'm telling you right now, the whole time I was up there, I heard nothing but 7%. Mm. They went to 16, they wanted 63, yeah. and within three years, they're going to vote this thing down to zero. Yeah. And when they do that, we got a real problem here in Gaston, Alabama, River City. We flat got a problem. So I think the only thing we can do as a group is to keep pushing those people up there and let them know how we feel and educate those young ones up there, just young, I'm just saying the new ones in yeah. Congress, coming in as to what this is, the most flexible plan that we've got. Well, I, also, we need to make sure that the people in Montgomery understand. Uh, well, there again, we've got a whole lot of new people I, who just I, I don't agree understand, with and when they get educated, I think it'll be fine. I, I was in Montgomery this past week, and they down there doing the same thing. They don't have the slightest idea. They just said that we got a mandate to go in and cut. Well, I, I don't have a problem with cutting, but you need to make sure you're cutting in the right place as opposed to just cutting. I don't think we gave you a mandate to just go cut. We want to make sure that there was no waste. When you start spending thirty, forty thousand dollars for a hammer or a nail, as opposed to 
giving money for these type of programs, and I got a serious problem with that, and they don't even want to look at that, 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 that part of the budget. Well, Senator Reid, I think, uh, really brought it to bear when he wanted a poet cowboy deal out there in uh, Arizona, in Nevada. $10 million. Yeah. $10 million for a poet riding a cowboy. Well, not no, riding a poet. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Okay. Well, in Nevada, in Nevada, it could be. You know, then be don't careful. ever throw it out. It could be that that be in Nevada. So anyway. Okay. The, uh, I, I would like to say $10 million. also. I like to say also that we, you know, we, we gave this due diligence last week, you know, about uh, the funding cut, you know, that that we went and and, and tried to convince people um, that they shouldn't occur in the way that they are intending to do it. Uh, but and, and I think I think you, the citizens, uh, do understand, you know, uh, where we are and what we're what we're doing. That's why you're here today. That's why you attend a council meeting. That's why you uh, attend to your uh, public affairs and why you tend to your city functions uh, here in the city so that you are, will be aware of what's going on. And we as a council will try our best to keep you abreast, to keep you informed as to what's going on. But I think there's been enough um, conversation about cuts, where the cuts should be, why they shouldn't be, uh, that you understand where the cuts are and why they should not occur in the areas that they are trying to make those cuts. So bear with us on that. Uh, uh, we'll continue to work in your favor, but you know, like, like we continue to say, you know, uh, the ball game has just started, and, and there, there is no. Uh, it may go into overtime. There's no such thing as nine innings in this game, or four quarters in the football game, or whatever. If this thing could go on and on forever. So uh, just stay tuned. Uh, to my 94-year-old neighbor, I really didn't need to say that about the cowboy. <laughs> but, but it has come to light and to my attention that save a horse, ride a cowboy. <laughs> well, you know, and I want to say that's about to talk about. It. Yeah, I, I just want to say to my learned uh, council member over here, I, I understand we said it last week, and I said it this week. And if I get an opportunity, I'm gonna say it again next week, because we got a very short memory here. And so you got to keep it before the public. And I know I might sound like I'm beating the dead horse, but I'll beat the dead horse as long as the horse is there. Because we just got to keep reminding folks. And, and I agree with you. I know we talked about it, but every chance I get, I'll talk about it again. And, I, and I'm not saying I'm not saying you shouldn't talk okay. about it. I, Don't get me I'm wrong. Just I'm, I'm just saying that the people the people that uh, were here last week understand the people. And when you're tuning in on Channel 99 after the council meeting's over, you will get this information also. Uh, but it, it is something that's going to be brought forward and it's going to be talked about uh, every week because it is something that's very crucial to the city of Gaza. Absolutely. Call for the question. Okay, clerk, will you take the vote, please? Those in favor to adopt the ordinance today, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Motion carries to adopt. Number 18 is an ordinance as ascending to denexation uh, of property located at <coughs> 1734 Rainbow Drive. SAI Group, LLC, owner of the Shell Station, has requested the denexation of the property, which was annexed by ordinance number 0-84-05. This ordinance has been presented today for the first reading, and the council will vote on it next week. Number 19 brings us to new business. Do we have any new business today? Mr. President, I have a, a resolution I'd like to ask for unanimous consent to consider this morning. Uh, it's a resolution authorizing agreement with Randy Britain, uh, architect for the uh, police training facility. Second. Clerk, you take the vote, please. Those in favor to consider the resolution today, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Uh, uh, those opposed? Consent has been granted. I'll ask for passage, please. Second. Are there any discussion? This is a, uh, they're going to move the training facility from the East Gaston location to out by the airport. Uh, they have a, a nice facility going out there, so it's going to be a better location and a, a new facility for our training, our uh, police officer training. Any more Fire discussion? Department. Fire department. Fire department, excuse me. <laughs> I'm trying to get the police out there. <laughs> Are there any more discussion? <laughs> Clerk, you take the vote, please. Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Mr. Pre Mr. President, I have two items I'd like to bring up on the new business, and I'll do both of them for unanimous consent, and then we'll act on them individually. Uh, one is a resolution approving the issues of a special event alcoholic beverage license, 
and the other one is authorizing a public hearing for considerations for a proposed economic development agreement. So I'd ask for unanimous consent. Second. Clerk, you take the vote. Those in favor to consider both resolutions today, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, consent has been granted. Okay, the first one is the resolution approved issues of a special event alcoholic beverage license to the fish market for the fourth annual shrimp and crawfish board to be held on May 7th. I'd ask for passage. Second. Is there any discussion? I think it's self-explanatory to do it every year. Every it's year. going to be just a special day. event, one day license. One day. Yeah. Clerk, would you take the vote, please? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known as saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Okay, the second resolution is authorizing a public hearing to consider a proposed economic development agreement with, I think this is pronounced Perrette, Gaston Mall LLC, for an exterior improvement for the new Joseph A. Banks clothing store. And we will be rebating 50% of the sales tax up to $100,000 for, for five years, or whichever one comes first, based on their income. So I'd ask for passage of this. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote, please? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Okay. Okay. Any more new business? Since there's no new business, more new business brings us down to number not, uh, number 20, <coughs> department reports, committee boards, et cetera. Do we have any today? Brings us down to 21, remarks by the mayor and council. Councilman Reed, would you like to go first today? I don't think I have any more today. <laughs> okay. you, you, sure you, you sure you don't want to ride that horse one more time? <laughs> I wish you wouldn't bring that horse up anymore. <laughs> Councilman Stewart. Uh, I really don't have much to say this morning uh, other than it's a beautiful day. The railroad bridge is being painted and uh, everything is well engaged. And we got our uh, mid uh, uh, financial report this morning and all our, our four major uh, financial revenue sources uh, were up a little bit. So all is well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Councilman Avery. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. All is not well engaged. <laughs> We uh, had another incident this, this weekend, uh, young people killing young people. And that's a sad commentary for our city when things like that happen. Uh, I, I'm not sure what the answer is. I mean, I, I do know that there's been a group of ministers and a group that have, that have had uh, some summits and meeting with our young folks. One of the things that we, we got out of that meeting, and I think Councilman Reed was there, and. Uh, JR, when JR was on the council, um, we, we, we've got to come up with something. I, I don't know what it is. Uh, we talk about we have a lot of activities for our young folks, uh, but we're still missing the boat somewhere. And, 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 and I just don't know the answer. I, I, I was just talking to Councilman Cannon a few minutes ago. Uh, last week we had some individuals here talking about uh, doing some summer employment uh, and making sure that our young folks here in the city of Gaston uh, are able to do some work and and uh, we were just running some numbers while we were sitting here uh, I, I think since the numbers are good here with the income we, we might want to set up a special program I want us to think about this I know the mayor's not here but Jerry Dunn if you'll pass this on to him we'd like to see maybe a uh, hundred young people from the city of Gaston just the city of Gaston to do a six-week summer program, put them to work for, for six weeks, because they're only out of school for seven or eight weeks. So if we could put them to work for about seven weeks, I, I ran the numbers a few minutes ago, and, and we're not talking about a whole lot of money, depending on if we want to do them 30 or 40 hours a week. We, we should be able to afford that out of our undesignated funds. I mean, we, we've got to do something to keep them busy, get them off the streets, and then find some other activities for them. So, if you would ask the mayor to look at that, and I would ask the council to consider that, because we're talking about, I, I, I went to night school, and it's daytime, so my numbers could be wrong. I, I looked at about $120,000 maybe. Uh, so somewhere in that neighborhood, we're talking about spending 
uh, maybe a little bit more, because I did it on four weeks, and Councilman uh, Cannon said something maybe about six weeks. So we're, we're talking about less than $200,000 that we could possibly get enough kids off the street, then give them something to do. So I would ask all of us to be mindful of that, if, 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 if we can work that out. That's all I have. Councilman Harris. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I agree with uh, my colleague in the fact that there has to be something done by the city of Gadsden for the youth, uh, for the young people in, in, in our area. We can't continue the road that we're traveling now. And, and, and it's going to take a consortium of all the people in Gaz. It's going to take the ministers, the, the city officials. It's going to take the parents. It's going to take the parents of our young people to get involved in things. And we need to put a lot of emphasis on that right now. Uh, we don't need to wait until next week. Uh, it need, this is something that needs to be done now. I don't know what the answer is. I'm like uh, Councilman Avery. I don't know what the answer is. But I do know that what we're doing now is not the answer. So let's, let's get together and let's do something uh, for our city. Uh, I promised I would be brief today. Uh, I'd also like to uh, encourage all the residents on Peyton Ridge Avenue, in particular down to uh, Cloverda uh, Cloverdale, uh, and all the residents on Peyton Road to call the non-emergency police number whenever you see these tractor trailers on Payton Ridge. They're tearing up our streets over there. They're not going to do anything about it. And there are signs that say that, do, that they are not to travel those streets. That, that's, a, that's a residence. And those tractor trailers have no business taking a shortcut from 759 down to the processing plant. And that's what's happening. So I need your, I need your help. I, we intend to stop that one way or the other. So whenever you see a tractor trailer come up past the junior college on Payton Ridge, I'm asking you to call the city non-emergency number, the police department, 256-549-4578. And we will stop those tractor trailers from coming through our neighborhood, tearing up our streets. And the next thing I want to, I want to say is thank you, SCLC, for the job that you're doing. Uh, they do a wonderful job. But I do want Ms. Bush to stand for just a moment briefly and tell us about the scholarship fund. Uh, who, 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 you know, who benefits from the scholarship fund and how it originated? Thank you. Thank you. In the past, we have awarded scholarships to graduating seniors from uh, Edward High School, Gaston City High School, and we've, it's been originated for many years before I even came on board. Uh, it's an ongoing uh, thing that we do each year, uh, but this is the first year that we had this, have decided that we're going to do more with our scholarship funds and just award students <coughs> at, to help them in college. We plan to do some things, some events, such as taking our children to tour colleges and events to help encourage our children to graduate. We have, you know, our dropout rate for our gas and city school for our black males is very low. And uh, with one of our targets this year and our focus this year is on education and parents and parenting. And we uh, plan to include parents and everything that we can do as well as our youth. We want to provide them with some activities through our scholarship fund that would encourage them to stay in school. Thank you. And what is the name of the scholarship fund? The William Fleming Scholarship Fund. William Fleming Scholarship Fund. The, uh, Reverend William Fleming was a civil rights activist that stood for everybody and he believed in education right. yeah. and he worked hard that children, youth, as well as me, that would be able to go forth and do uh, better in life. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have. Councilman well, Avery. Yeah, I forgot to, my uh, district meeting will be this Saturday morning at uh, 10 a.m. at the Carver Community Center. I forgot to make that announcement. So everybody is welcome, whether you live in the district or not. Uh, please, ma'am and please, sir, come out Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Okay, Chair Don, you had an announcement for us? <laughs> I just wanted to remind everybody that Saturday the 16th is our annual cleanup day in Gadsden. 
We always meet out front here. We've got several local churches and community organizations that help. Uh, and we try to pick up as much litter as we can. We've got uh, um, Sheriff Entrican is going to send us some people from uh, work release over to help us to help us do that. And uh, if you want to participate, be here at 7:30. We'll work till 12, and uh, we've got free T-shirts as long as they last. So be early. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and remember, child abuse do hurt. Okay. okay. <clears throat> I want to thank everyone for being here today. This is a good crowd we have for a guest and city council meeting. Uh, last week we had Youth and Government Day. All the students from Guest and City were here in the Youth and Government Day. I want to thank uh, Cawthorn's Bakery for the donuts they provided for us and also Popeye's Chicken and East Gaston for all the chicken and biscuits. These guys are always with us. Anytime we call and ask them of anything for the kids, they're right on board with them. And I do appreciate these two businesses for helping us. Uh, there will be a District 6 Council meeting tonight at 5.30 at Banks Park in the new Activity Center. We'll still be able to come out and we'll talk about some issues that's affecting that uh, section of town down there. Uh, also, I'd like to say that uh, our prayers and thoughts go out with the Clarence Chandler family. Mr. Chandler was uh, 91 years old. He still drove, drove his own car. Uh, he cooked food for the neighborhood all the time. He was going out and helping people weed it through the yard. He was 91 years old. He was just a model person and a model uh, neighbor for all those people up there and they really he's really going to be missed his funeral will be today at call you butler at at two o'clock and our prayers and thoughts to go out with that family do i have a motion to adjourn please so moved we're adjourned